You're listening to Tales from the Ridge. Emil strode down a long aisle of tall shelves, the scent of faux pine lingering pleasantly in his nostrils. He lifted up a bottle of Dremel brand Jontar scale polish, the purple murky liquid swishing ominously inside. When your scales lack that supple gloss of youth, try Dremel, he said out loud. Cash snorted as she walked by, but the Jontar of her crew, Tack, paused next to him and plucked it out of his hands. Thank, was all she said. On the house, Ms. Tack, said Capitan, as a thank you for your helping out my operation here. Tack nodded and strode back outside to where a line of shiny hover bikes awaited. It's quite the store you've set up for yourself, Mr. Capitan, Cash said from another aisle, her voice pinging off the metal roof. I appreciate that said the Calafera businessman as he walked confidently toward the counter where Claire, Emile's wife, had agreed to cashier. The woman's eyes were wide as she stared at the register, its shining bronze glowing like a small sun against the warm sunset light that illuminated the large windows that ran the front of the building. Emile watched his wife with a soft expression, wondering as he often did at why a woman like that had married a man like him. The rest of Cash's crew consisted of three humans, a pair of twins named Barker and Boone McCreary, and Cash's own sister, June. Emil had not had much chance to interact with any of them, busy as he had been rounding up volunteers from the folks around town to flesh out their ranks. Axtell was sure to bring down a heavy hand. They had to be prepared. Outside of Capitan, Sheriff Spine and himself, There were not a few folks who had a desire to see Axtell taken down a notch. The Calafera rancher held this county in an iron mercantile grip. His store was the only one for miles, until now, and he had taken the liberty to set prices at a premium while underselling vendors and people having no other options were forced to oblige. Well, no longer, Emil thought to himself, his eyes scanning row after row of goods. How Capitan had managed to stock the place without Axtell catching wind was beyond Emil, but Capitan was wily, where Axtell was vicious. The two had been scuffling over territory for as long as Emil had lived on Orthoptera. The locals had clumped together near the front of the store, whispering to one another and eyeing the large windows and Cash's crew in equal measure. There was the sheriff, Murphy McSween, a representative from the farmhand union, another smaller Calafera rancher named Rio, and Camille Coe, one of the two siblings who ran the saloon in town. Emil approached the small group as confidently as he could manage. Well, if it isn't my newest deputy, said Sheriff Spine, clapping Emil on the shoulder as he entered the circle. How do we know we can trust these hired guns, Sheriff? asked Rio, rubbing one of the curly antennae that protruded from his face like a mustache. Won't Axtell offer them more money to turn on us? Cash Guthrie has somewhat of a reputation in my field, Rio. Spine tugged on the belt that rested below his prominent beer belly. She won't turn. Not for money, leastways. And her... crew? The Califera's dark, luminous eyes darted over the newcomers. Follow her orders, Spine said authoritatively, as you will follow mine and Emile's. 
Before Rio could respond, the front door of the general store dinged. Emil spun around to face it. A blue-green Calafera, dressed in an impeccably tailored suit, waltzed inside. Flanked by Dick Dolan and another human, Emil had not had the displeasure to meet. My word, this is quite a sight, said Axtell, his dark orb eyes finding Capitan almost immediately. I'll give credit where credit is due, brother. This was no small feat. Capitan stiffened and blinked. Get out. Ah, 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 Axtell crooned. Now that I'm here, I'm obliged to warn you. I will not abide competition, even a familial one. You should have known that by now. Axtell turned to Emil. Speaking of family, I'm sorry to hear about your brothers, Mr. Carlyle. But rustling is a dangerous business, after all. Emile's cheeks flushed dark red. Before he could bluster back, he heard Claire's voice break over them all. We're closed! The woman's voice held not a single shred of fear as she marched around the counter, her boot heels clicking against the faux wood floors. Mrs. Carlyle, you needn't concern yourself. I said we're closed. Claire moved up to Axtell so confidently that Dick Dolan reached for the shock pistol at his side. Axtell held out a staying hand to his crony. Claire, isn't it? You are trespassing, the woman hissed. Get the fuck out. Axtell was about to reply when Cash and crew appeared at the end of each aisle. Dusters pulled back, hands within reach of their weapons. See, you were smart enough to hire some outside muscle. Excel's voice hardened as he scanned them all. Fine. Here's my warning. Have this place empty by midnight, or you'll regret it, little brother. And with that, the Califera and his two goons left as quickly as they had arrived. The air in the store remained tense, even as Axtell's motor carriage lumbered away. What's the plan, Capitan? Cash asked as she lit a cigar and took a long pull. Guess we'll just have to be here when midnight rolls around, won't we? The Califera replied with an ominous grin. The street outside the general store was suspiciously empty as a deep red sun set, casting long tendril shadows over the dimming landscape. Emile had been unable to convince Claire to return to the safety of their home. If you go, I go, had been all she had to say on the matter. Emile stared out of the smudged glass toward the rooftops of empty businesses that lined the streets. A flash of metal revealed where Barker and Boone McCreary had been set to act as snipers if it came down to it. The twins were an odd pair, Emile thought, seemingly too boisterous and easygoing for the patient precision of their craft. The Jontar, Tack, was posted up at the back door, cross-legged on the floor, meditating in some kind of fugue state. Any nearby sound in one eye would pop open, searchingly, before returning to her tranquility. Cash and June were seated by the register, a deck of cards splayed out on the floor between them. Claire had joined their game and was laughing along at some anecdote gushing from June's lips. Cash stood, striding slowly to Emile's side as the first stars began to wink to life in the purple sky. First time on a stakeout? Emil snorted. Of this sort? I suppose. Spine told me a bit of your story. You've got quite the axe to grind with this Axtell fella, I imagine. Emil turned his head to gaze at Cash with a hard expression. When he did not reply, she continued. Don't make a stupid decision because of it, is all I'm going to say. Cash nodded toward Claire. You've got a good one there. If you die, I'm offering her a job, and you don't want that kind of life for her now, do you? Emil actually chuckled at that. She's no safer with me, clearly. Gonna be honest, Mr. Carlyle. I've made quite a career out of this kind of work, and I want you to try to let my folks and I take the lead, if possible. Savvy? Emil said nothing, his silence forcing a deep sigh from Cash, who strode back to the game of cards. A townsperson skipped by at a brisk pace. The tension was clearly palpable, even outside of the store, as the street descended into darkness, and the nighttime bugs of Orthoptera took up their chorus. The sound of a motor carriage rumbled the entire store, product vibrating against shelving, window panes shaking against their frames. 
Axel's posse had arrived. Get back from the windows, Cash ordered. Emil and the other townspeople quickly obliged, hopping to their places behind barricades of sacks of flour and other grains that had been set up around the floor. Emil squatted down beside Claire and took her hand, pressing a soft kiss into her knuckles. She pulled his forehead to her lips, returning the affection. From his vantage point, Emil could see the roof to the motor carriage flip open, Dick Dolan lifting his arms above it, his head hovering in the darkness. The lid offered him unknown protection from the McCreary brothers, who Emil saw furiously making their way to a better vantage point. "'Come on out, or we're coming in!' he said gleefully. There was a tense moment of inactivity. Sweat beaded on Emil's forehead, his hand already aching around the barrel of his shock pistol. "'All right!' Dolan shouted. "'Have it your way!' The window pane shattered in an explosion of glittering glass as the doors to the motor carriage were thrown open and Axtell's crew poured out, guns blazing. The townspeople inside the store bunkered down, waiting, per Cash's instruction. A larger piece of debris flew by. Emil had only a moment to cry out before the flashbang exploded a few feet away. The ringing in his ear deadened all other noise as he threw himself to the ground, pulling Claire with him. His eyes had closed. Involuntarily or not, he couldn't be sure. As he forced them open, he saw Axtell's goonies pouring in through the front door. His hands shook as he raised them, using the barricade to level his pistol. Dizziness overwhelmed him, nauseating, as he tried to raise himself up to aim. The shot caught one of them in the knee, spurting blood all over the white flower that now blanketed the floor. Camille Co. had somehow managed to do the same, taking out another of the men with a shot straight to the head. She wiped her mouth on her sleeve and met Emile's gaze, her lips twisting into a rueful grin. Claire had opened her eyes. She stared up at Emile with a look somewhere between fear and determination. Before she could sit up, Tack's voice echoed from the back of the building. More! Back! There was another loud bang as the back door flew open. Emile rolled toward the aisles, his head spinning. He watched as the Jontar caught a flashbang and tossed it back, taking out half a dozen of Axtell's men, at least momentarily. Emile army crawled down the aisle, Claire behind him as Cash and June took up position at the barricade. He heard the hard thump of sniper fire connecting with bone and flesh. The McCreary's were doing their part, it seemed. Tack roared from the back of the store, lifting a man straight out of his boots and tossing him out. Emil shot the next man to walk through the door before he could find the Jontar to aim at. Camille Co. appeared, rushing to the opposite side of the door frame as Tack covered her with crossfire. The two women, one human, one Jontar, held the back door. Emil returned his gaze to the front. Dick Dolan threw himself through the shattered window his boots scattering broken glass as he landed in a slide. He stayed down, hidden from the scopes of the McCreary twins. Emil stood, a blue bullet flying past his head as the box of cornmeal beside him exploded with barks. Spine and Rio were still manning their barricade of sorghum. Through the puffs of dust and smoke, Emil could not even begin to track how many of Axtell's men were left. He only had eyes for Dolan. Dolan rolled, avoiding a spray of gunfire, and vaulted over the barricade, kicking June Guthrie across the jaw and sending her sprawling. Cash whipped her pistol at him, but he caught her hand, and the two of them went rolling, and the weapon skittered across the floor. Emil sprinted across the store, picking up the extra gun and rushing to Cash's aid. The two were locked in a battle of strength, Dolan straddling Guthrie, attempting to aim the shock pistol in his hand straight down toward her skull. With a shout, Emil collided with him, the wind knocking out of both of them as they landed on the unforgiving floorboards. Emil rolled, raising the gun as he did so. Before he could aim, he heard Claire scream. He turned, his face going cold at the sound. His wife was locked in Axtell's spindly insect legs, a shock pistol pressed to her temple. Spine and Rio were already in the process of being hogtied by some of the Califera's goons. You want to call this off? Axtell asked in that wispy tone. June pushed herself up onto her knees, rubbing her jaw with one hand. 
Emil could still hear conflict at the rear of the store. It was then he felt Dolan's pistol at the back of his skull. Capitan popped his head up behind the register. Hey, big brother, the Calafera spat. Duck! Axtell quirked his head to one side as Claire bit deeply into his exoskeleton arm, shattering it with the force of her jaw. The Calafera screamed and stumbled backward. Seconds later, his head exploded as one of the McCreary twins found their mark. The husk of what remained collapsed atop a film of glass, flour, and blood. Blue ooze dripped from Claire's mouth as she sank down, covered in bits of skeletal shell and organs. Emil heard Cash handle Dick Dolan as he rushed forward to his wife, wrapping his arms about her. The internal mess of Axtell smeared over him as she sank into his arms. Well, she said breathlessly, that's that, I suppose. I love you, he said, pressing his forehead to her cheek. I know, she said, patting his arm distractedly. Capitan stood, straightening his suit vest as he casually rounded the counter and stared down at the corpse of his older brother. The goons who had been tying up Sheriff Spine and Rio had paused in shock, unsure of where their loyalties now lay. Even the back of the store had gone quiet as the news spread to the outside. Capitan kicked at a chunk of Axel's head. You boys want a job? A few days passed as Emil had to marvel at how quickly Capitan could clean up a mess. Axtell's holdings were split up into a cooperative of other ranchers, human and Califera, who had been hurt by his monopoly. Capitan's store was repaired and restocked. Dick Dolan was rotting in Sheriff Spine's jail awaiting a trial. All in all, it was almost a bit too good to be true. But perhaps that was what happened when you hired Cash Guthrie's crew. Things went just a bit better than expected. As for Cash herself, Emil was almost sad to see her go. He stood with Claire outside the general store as the gunslinger and her crew saddled up onto their Haas hover bikes. You take care of this place, Deputy Carlisle, said Cash with a wink. Yes, ma'am, said Emil, his face splitting into a wide grin. You know who to call if things get rowdy around here again, added one of the McCreary twins. Sure do, said Claire. The hover bikes roared to life, the air beneath them rippling like a mirage as the guns for hire rode out of town. Emil and Claire waving them away until they were not but specks on the horizon. Special shout out to all my patrons, Vicky, Mike, Willow, Jill, Orsoya, Jessica, Fran, Chelsea, Fritz, Rodney, Andrew, Megan, Kira, Katie, Camille, Emily, Andy, and Kat. You can support Tales from the Ridge and my other projects on Patreon. If you liked this episode, be sure to tune in next month for a brand new short story in the Gunslingers and Galaxies universe. You can find me on any social media. Search Ari Levy or Ari Levy Author. And as always, thanks for listening. Sounds. Sorry. Axel Spindley's sex legs, shock pistol, presses her temple. <laughs>